and welcome to Diabetes Deep Dives. My name is Candice and I am from Diabetes Canada. If you are new to our video series, thank you for joining us. If you have been enjoying the series, welcome back. This video series is designed to go beyond the surface of general diabetes information. We are diving deeper into different areas of diabetes management by featuring dynamic and engaging guests with knowledge or lived experience on the topic. We hope to spark continued interest and learning and leave you with practical tips and tools that you can easily use. A new video is shared every month, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified about new content. You can also check us out on social media to find out when the next one will be posted on our YouTube channel. Thanks to those who have subscribed and for your support of our video series. In this episode, we are going to shine a light into the world of automated insulin delivery, also known as AID for short. Specifically, the conversation will focus on a hot topic in the world of AID, better known as doing it yourself or DIY AID. You will hear from Dr. Ayanna Halperin, who will take us through an explanation of AID, what devices are involved, and what it means to do it yourself. She will share some highlights from an upcoming Diabetes Canada position statement on DIY AID, as well as the research that has informed the position statement. After watching this video, we hope that you will understand what AID is and recognize what devices are involved, understand the differences between commercial AID systems and DIY AID, know the benefits and risks of commercial and DIY AID systems, Feel comfortable with approaching your healthcare provider with questions about DIY AID and know where to find more information about DIY AID. While this is a very interesting and emerging topic, we recognize that the content in this video may not be relevant for everyone and will depend on what your experience with diabetes is and what devices are available to you where you live. If you have specific questions about AID, please reach out to your healthcare team. These videos are for educational purposes only. The content discussed in this video is not intended to be medical advice, and to the extent that medical advice is required, you should consult with a qualified medical professional. The information discussed in this video cannot replace consultations with a qualified healthcare professional to meet your individual medical needs. The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Diabetes Canada. Dr. Halperin is a staff physician at Sunnybrook Hospital and an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. As the quality and innovation lead for the Division of Endocrinology, she leads a group of physicians committed to improving quality and safety for inpatients and outpatients with diabetes and other endocrine diseases. Dr. Halperin has a large type 1 diabetes practice and believes strongly in the potential for continuous glucose monitoring to improve diabetes-related outcomes and the experience of living with diabetes. As always, we hope that this video sparks your interest in learning more about diabetes management. And now over to Dr. Halperin. Hey, I'm Dr. Alana Halperin, and I'm really excited to be here today to talk about our new do-it-yourself automated insulin delivery position statement that will be out in the July 2023 issue of the Canadian Journal of Diabetes. So let's start by talking about what is automated insulin delivery. Automated insulin delivery utilizes two advanced diabetes technologies, continuous glucose monitoring and an insulin pump, and then a control algorithm, which can be embedded within the pump itself or on an app on a smartphone, is used to have the insulin modulated based on the glucose sensor. And it's different from using regular injections or just a pump and open loop, because if you live with diabetes, you know that no two days are the same. And as much as you can fine tune your settings, there's still days where your glucose are gonna go high and low because of all the variability in your day-to-day -day activities. But when you have a control algorithm modulating their insulin delivery, you can stay in range more often. And long before we had commercial systems available, there was a community of individuals living with diabetes or caring for people living with type one diabetes who decided to not wait. And they got together and did it themselves. And that's what DIY automated insulin delivery is using a commercially available insulin pump and continuous glucose monitor, but a open source control algorithm, which is available on the internet to help modulate your insulin delivery. 
This is a screenshot from one of my patients using a commercial automated insulin delivery system. And so I'll orient you because I think it's very illustrative to what I'm talking about. This is the target range of glucose between four and 10, and this is the sensor glucose. You can appreciate that this person is spending over 90% of their day in the green zone where we wanna be, not too high, not too low. In order to do that, the insulin pump is continually adjusting the basal insulin. And when it looks like the person's glucose is gonna drop below our desired range, the pump suspends. That's what these pink lines are. And then in order to, as the glucose levels start to climb, the basal insulin delivery goes back up. Then the person wakes up and decides to eat breakfast. And this is where a person living with diabetes still has to interact with the pump and say, I'm gonna eat approximately 30 grams of carbs. It tells the pump it's eating carbs and the pump delivers a bolus of insulin, but that wasn't quite right. Maybe the person underestimated their insulin or took it a little too late. And so the pump delivers small correction doses without the person having to do anything and the glucose comes back into range. Then lunchtime, the next time a person living with diabetes should have to think about their diabetes. Bolus again, this time the bolus is bang on and the glucose barely rises until about four in the afternoon when maybe you had a stressful event at work or you grabbed a cookie with your coffee and forgot to bolus. No big deal. The pump delivers a correction bolus and you're back in range. Dinner goes well, but as you get closer to bedtime, the glucose starts to drop. Maybe there was an after dinner walk or you over bolused for dinner. Either way, the pump suspends and keeps the person living with diabetes in range. And we know that Diabetes Canada wants most adults living with type 1 diabetes to spend about 70% of their time in that target range of 3.9 to 10 millimoles per liter. But with automated insulin delivery, it's very possible to achieve goals above this with greater than 70% time and range and much less than 4% hypoglycemia. So when we talk about DIY systems, they're part of a larger way of thinking about insulin delivery options. We have multiple daily injections, continuous subcutaneous insulin, otherwise known as insulin pumps, and automated insulin delivery. And automated insulin delivery comes in different forms, commercial and DIY. And we should be thinking that our patients should have choices along this various spectrum from the yellow to the blue to the teal here, and that whatever makes sense for you and how you want to manage your diabetes, your team should be supporting you in. So what automated insulin delivery systems are available in Canada today? The first is the Medtronic 670G system, which we're gonna see less and less of because now the Medtronic 780G system has been approved. And this system is uh, used with a Medtronic sensor and um, allows for individualized targets between 5.6 and 6.7 millimoles per liter. There's also the control IQ system, which allows uh, people to use a Dexcom and a tandem pump and um, has a control algorithm that adjusts to a range between 6.2 and 8.9. But then we have the do-it-yourself automated insulin delivery systems. And these systems are meant to um, uh, be a little bit more flexible. People have different options in terms of which pump and CGM they wanna use, and they can build the system right off of their phone. And of course, um, the uh, uh, targets are also much more personalized. Um, of course, there is no licensing. So as I mentioned before, there's at least three different DIY automated insulin delivery options out there for you today. And these are the ones that we discuss in detail in the position statement. So why are people with diabetes choosing to use DIY? This is a survey from a colleague of mine named Kate Farnsworth, who um, surveyed people using DIY automated insulin delivery systems across Canada. And what she found was that people choose to use these systems because of transparency and interoperability. They like the idea of open source software that um, can be quickly iterated um, without having to wait for regulators. In addition, it, for many people, it's the only kind of automated insulin delivery available where they live due to barriers related to insurance coverage. And some people believe it's safer than other systems because it's built by people living with diabetes who really understand what it's like to experience hypoglycemia. And for many, it's an issue of affordability. So although people are choosing to do it themselves, they're rarely doing it alone because the DIY community is quite established. And when I recommend these systems to my patients, I direct them to trusted online resources like the DIY Facebook groups called Loop 
And um, I know that they will get good information there because the Facebook group is moderated by somebody I know and trust. And that will help them on their journey to starting to use their own insulin, um, uh, automated insulin delivery systems. So what about evidence? There is evidence supporting DIY AID use. And um, this was an article published in the New England of Journal, a New England Journal of Medicine back in uh, the fall of 2022, which was showed that people were randomized to either using just an insulin pump and a CGM or the open source automated insulin delivery system. And what happened was, not surprisingly, the people using the automated insulin delivery system spent about 10% time more in range across the study compared to the control group, which had no improvements in their time and range. That resulted in more three hours and 21 minutes a day in the optimal range, which means more time doing other things and less time worrying about your diabetes. So where can I find more information? As I mentioned, I often direct patients to trusted online resources like the Looped Facebook group, or if you're more interested in understanding um, things about the Android APS system, because perhaps that's the type of smartphone you use, you can find information about their systems as well here. And all of this will be available in the um, publication that's coming out um, in, the, in the next month. So another thing you might be wondering is, what should I ask my healthcare team? So we know that one of the reasons people don't use DIY AID is because they're worried their healthcare team doesn't support them. Our Diabetes Canada position paper makes a strong statement that for uh, diabetes professionals who support AID, meaning they're comfortable enough with insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors, and so they're ready to um, prescribe commercial systems, they should also be supporting patients using DIY. They're actually quite similar and we should support our patient's autonomy and um, their ability to choose the system that's best for them in managing their complex chronic disease. But if your healthcare professional does not support DIY AID, maybe they can make a referral to a team that does. Perhaps they haven't had a patient before, but they're willing to learn with you. Certainly, I learned the most from my patients who were using DIY AID even before there were commercial systems available, such that once the commercial systems came along and became available in Canada, I was able to take some of my early learnings and apply those to my patients using commercial systems. And there's more similarities and differences between these different control algorithms so usually a practitioner who's comfortable with the general um, automated insulin delivery system will be comfortable. You can also let them know because maybe they don't know that the Diabetes Canada position paper and healthcare users guide has been published in CJD and that they can get lots of useful tips and tricks to help support you. It's important to recognize that it's not the job of the healthcare professional to build the app for you. That is why it's called DIY. If you're using a commercial system, you can call a 1-800 number if you're having technical support. If you're using a DIY system, the technical support is your online community. However, these online communities have grown so significantly that sometimes you can get better support at three in the morning because there's someone from Australia who happens to be on Facebook than you can from the 1-800 numbers. I'm not recommending one system over the other. I'm just recommending that our patients with living with type one diabetes should have the choice to choose between the DIY and the commercial systems. But it is really important that the healthcare team continue to support you in optimizing your settings to help meet your personal goals and decrease the diabetes burden. So education remains an important part of all AID systems. And having an AID system doesn't mean you don't need to know the basics because technology fails, whether it's commercial or the DIY systems. Insulin pump sites can fail and you need to know how to go back. How do you troubleshoot for ketones? How do you um, calculate the doses that you need if your pump has failed and you need to go back to manual injections? Those are important learning points that are universal and should be reviewed regularly with your healthcare team. So when it comes to navigating DIY AID to optimize settings, there's tons out there and way outside the scope of this short video. But it's important to know that there are lots of growing resources. There's a full hour and 20 minute webinar that I put together for our um, healthcare practitioners to learn more about this. But we talk in general about understanding how the system calculates insulin, how the system adjusts insulin, what to do when the system stops working, 
educating on essential management points, like I already mentioned, and how to share the data. And that's actually a really important point for you if you're somebody living with type 1 or a family member of someone living with type 1, is your healthcare team does want to have a look at the data. So figure out what system works for them. There's more than one. But that way, when you get back together in clinic, if you've started using one of these systems, they can review how the insulin delivery systems are working for you and help you to make changes to your settings to optimize your glucose outcomes. As with all insulin delivery systems, whether they be injections or automated insulin delivery, there's a risk. We know that insulin is a high alert medication and when given in excess can result in hypoglycemia. But with DIY, there's less parameters than with the commercially available systems. So it is important to work with your healthcare team to set the right max basal, maximum bolus and suspend threshold. These are detailed settings that you will learn more about if you want to watch our longer webinar and or if you want to dive into loop docs and start building the system for yourself. In general, however, continuous glucose monitoring, which is recommended by Diabetes Canada for all adults living with type, for all people actually, children and adults living with type 1 diabetes, um, are um, very helpful to prevent significant hypoglycemia because alerts and alarms will prompt you before you've gone too low. So in summary, there are four key messages I'd like to leave you with. We feel that DIY AID can be effective to help individuals with T1D improve glycemic outcomes while reducing the burden of day-to-day -day diabetes self-management. We also feel strongly that the diabetes healthcare team has an obligation to discuss all available treatment options that have evidence of benefit, and that includes DIY AID. Healthcare practitioners should connect interested people with diabetes to trusted online, social media, and in-person resources, but they're not obligated to build the systems for the patients. In fact, it's best when patients build these systems on their own or using the support of the online community, uh, community so they know how to troubleshoot it when things go wrong. Healthcare practitioners should continue to provide ongoing support and education to people with diabetes who choose to use the DIY AID systems including assisting with optimizing pump settings and coaching on the behaviors that are linked to decreasing glucose variability. All of this is so that people with diabetes can live full and enjoyable lives and minimize the burden of managing T1D. Thanks so much for joining me on this deep dive video today. Thank you so much for joining us to dive deeper into the world of DIY automated insulin delivery and how it can support diabetes management. Again, this topic may not be relevant to everyone living with diabetes, but we do hope that you found it interesting and learned something new. Please take the opportunity to let us know what you learned, what you liked, and how we can do it better. You can do that by posting a comment in the comments section below, or by clicking the link to the feedback survey in the description box. If you have other ideas for other topics you'd like to learn more about, you can include that in the comments or feedback survey as well. Dr. Halpern mentioned that other educational resources will be available soon. If you are interested in the upcoming position statement and webinar, please stay tuned to the Diabetes Canada website and the description box on YouTube for this video, as we will post links to those resources when they are available. In the meantime, you can check out some additional helpful resources related to this topic from Diabetes Canada. If you are looking for more resources about diabetes management, please visit our website at diabetes.ca. You can also email us at info at diabetes.ca or call our info line at 1-800-BANTING. That's 1-800-226-8464 and speak to one of our information and support specialists who can address your needs. Thanks again for joining us and see you next time. Mm -hmm.